So without further ado from me, I'd like to hand over to the distinguished host from yesterday, Lord Aradazi, who is not only a, an internationally renowned surgeon, he is also a UK business ambassador and known to everybody in this room as a leading healthcare specialist. Ara, over to you. <laughs> Well, thank you, Lord Green, and good morning, Your Excellencies, my Lords, ladies and gentlemen. It's a great pleasure to contribute to this morning business summit on healthcare and life sciences. I'm particularly pleased to see many of you who participated in yesterday's Global Health Policy Summit. This country has a proud tradition of innovation. I will not list our past accomplishments, but you probably would have heard some that were mentioned by the Prime Minister yesterday, the discovery of DNA, penicillin, and certainly the creation of the probably the most innovative imaging solutions, which most clinicians in practice is magnetic res resonance imaging. As Lord Green said, yesterday at the Guild Hall, we brought together policymakers, industry leaders, and academics to understand how we can meet the common challenges that we face today and learn and share from each other. There are three core areas where the agenda of the Policy Summit and which we are here today to discuss come together in a lockstep. First, in the power of digital innovation, second in nurturing talent, and the third in innovation in healthcare delivery, where the UK is a world leading example. At the summit yesterday, we discussed the power of digital innovation. In the future, digital innovation will power wider innovation in the healthcare. For healthcare delivery, the summit described the seamless flow of information for better quality, more integrated care. The panel described its aspiration for patients that are informed, educated, and empowered to take more care of themselves. There is so much more to do. Today, if you go to the supermarket or to the airport, you will check in yourself online, or you can check out your own shopping. Patients can do more for themselves. Patients want to do more for themselves. We have to give them the tools, the technology, the information, and the incentives to make it happen. The NHS is precisely the place to pioneer these developments, building on Britain's unique strengths, an unrivaled research base in life sciences, but also behavioral economics strong creative industries that can find new ways to engage patients and in this unique universal healthcare system. For life sciences, digital innovation means the integrated data sets that will open up innovations that we cannot imagine today. Our National Health Service is ideally placed to provide that platform. So the agenda of healthcare improvements and of research are precisely aligned on the digital innovation platform, empowering patients through better information, improving the flow of information in delivery, and the unified data sets for research all face the same challenge. We must solve the privacy and the data governance issues to unlock this innovation. The participants in the summit yesterday we're also delighted to hear the Prime Minister outline the government's proposal to examine an opt-out rather than an opt-in approach to data for research. Yet data untapped brings no insight. It is the people that shine the light. In their essence, healthcare and life sciences share the same great strengths and the same opportunities, which is great people. At the summit yesterday, we discussed the innovation in human capital that our healthcare systems need. We need to greater support for education, training, and research. They reinforce and complement each other. 
Scientific education teaches the fundamentals of critical thinking and clinical reasoning. This means that education underpins both research and clinical service. On those strong foundations, training gives us the skills and experience to treat patients. And research enables us to constantly improve the quality of care that we are able to deliver. It is in education, training and research that most powerful combination that the UK is truly world leading. I strongly believe that the UK can sustain and improve its position at this top destination for the world's most talented doctors and researchers to come and learn and hone on their skills. It will require the energy, the investment that the NHS is already making, including the universities, industries and the government's great vision for this to happen. We have the global links, a language that is essential to its success. Attracting the most talented doctors and researchers would be sustainable, secure and strengthen further the UK's leading position. Now on the delivery side, the best people are attracted to work in high-performing institutions and systems. There is innovation in healthcare delivery taking place at all the time within the NHS. Take the changes to stroke care and trauma services in London that has saved many, many lives. They are now acknowledged globally as the textbook examples of improving the value of healthcare. At the summit yesterday, we also agreed to embrace innovations to modernize care, to use greater range of healthcare professionals, not just the most qualified, to use technology to reach the people that are the hardest to reach, and to solve cases over the phone and eliminate the need of physical contact altogether. Throughout, through our collaboration with the Lancet, the summit looked at technologies for global health. The panel yesterday called for a scale-up of things we already know how to do. And they met with the support and the commitment from research funders to help them in that task. Sir Mark Walport of the Wellcome Trust and Dame Sally Davis, the Chief Medical Officer and the Head of R&D for the Department of Health, expressed their willingness to support the research and the evaluation in this very important area. I probably don't need to tell you that people in this room that some 87% of the global medical device revenue is generated from the US, Europe and Japan. That is the focus of innovation. Industry must invest more in frugal technology than can serve people at the base of the pyramid. This country is one of the largest donors for global health, giving half a billion dollars to Global Fund, fight for AIDS, tuberculosis and malaria, and more than $2 billion to the Global Alliance for Vaccines and Immunization. Given the investment we're already making, the research base and the worldwide companies that we have, this country could lead the world in innovation of frugal technologies. Digital innovation making the best of our people, innovation in healthcare delivery is a shared agenda. So, our summit yesterday set the stage, as Lord Green said, for today's discussions. This country has a huge amount to offer, and I look forward to listening and learning from all of you. Thank you.